Not such a saint. What mysteries lie beneath the personality of Mother Teresa? Greetings. Today, we are going to talk about one of the most famous and controversial figures in the history of mankind. We're going to talk about Mother Teresa, also called the Angel from Hell. How many houses of mercy were opened under this woman? The light of God seen in the process of filming a documentary about the life of Mother Teresa, myth or reality? Is it true that in the orphanages built during the life of the nun, there was complete chaos and the sick were injected with the same syringes? Be sure to watch the video to the very end so you don't miss anything important. Helping the sick and needy was her calling. Do you agree that this woman we know exclusively from the positive side? To once again make sure that this statement is true, let's remember the early years of Mother Teresa's life. And at the same time, let us understand how she came to her vocation. The real name of the woman consecrated is Agnes Gonje Boyadjiu. She was born on August 26, 1910 in Skopje, the present capital of Northern Macedonia. Her parents did not deny their child anything as they were rich Albanian Catholics. By the way, Agnes was the third child in the family. Because of the occupation of her relatives, the future Mother Teresa showed a special interest in religion and worship. The girl soon lost her father, who was killed in the Serbian movement. The mother began to raise her three children alone. To earn her bread, she worked as a seamstress. After a few years, Agnes Bojaju realized that religion and helping the needy was her calling. At the age of 12, the girl became interested in the activities of Indian missionaries. Soon, she entered a special institution after graduating from which she went abroad. Henceforth, Agnes Gonje Boyaju became known by her usual nickname. At the age of 21, the girl becomes a nun and she is sent to Calcutta, India. It is there that the girl becomes a teacher in a Catholic school. The nun knew English perfectly, although a few years ago she used the services of an interpreter. But the woman came to her true vocation at the end of the first half of the last century. She quit her job and decided to help the sick and needy. According to her own recollections, her act was due to her constant encounter with God in her visions, who called her to leave her job and start helping people building houses of mercy and other institutions. You know, soon Mother Teresa's deeds were talked about all over the world. In this difficult endeavor, the woman was assisted by 12 God-fearing nuns. At that time, they were part of the Order of the Missionary Sisters of Love. With the permission of the Pope, these women began to help not only in India, but also in all countries of the world. In 1948, the construction of the first institution for the needy began. The authorities of the country specially allocated the premises of one of the former temples. The institution was named Home for the Dying, and the initiative to name it this way and not otherwise came directly from Mother Teresa. Can you imagine how such institutions have taken root not only in India, but all over the globe? The statistics are a clear proof of this. The Houses of Mercy fully demonstrated the sanctity of the places and the gratuitous help to all those in need. No wonder that the number of nuns increased to 5,000 people in a fairly short period of time. Institutions began to be built in 121 countries and the total number of Houses of Mercy reached the mark of 700 pieces, all for television. As you can already guess, the holy activity of Mother Teresa did not do without journalistic filming. This event occurred in the late 60s AS, when on behalf of the world-famous channel BBC in the House of Mercy came Thomas Malcolm Muggeridge, who holds the position of journalist. It was then that the filming of the documentary began. The process of filming the movie, although it took place in a building without lighting, but the BBC channel made a sensation. The BBC channel created a sensation by suggesting to the viewers that they were seeing an amazing phenomenon, the light of God penetrating into these amazing and truly holy places. But in the end, it turned out to be much simpler. The cameraman who came with the journalist used Kodak film, 
The technology of this brand is capable of shooting at night without much difficulty. Terrible conditions inside the shelters. So, no matter what is said about Mother Teresa, there is always a flip side to the story. This is not particularly disseminated in those days, but today we can say with complete certainty. In the Houses of Mercy, which became habitual shelters for the seriously ill, terrible things happened. Let us finally learn the whole truth, because of which Mother Teresa partly received the nicknames Angel from Hell and Servant of the Devil. The first thing to look at is the staff of such institutions. It may seem strange, but they weren't employed here under a labour contract, but voluntarily. Yes, yes, in shelters for seriously ill patients and needy people acted exclusively by volunteers. The next important point is the conditions inside the institutions. Behind the walls of the shelters, there was complete unsanitary conditions and the quality of food left much to be desired. People were fed the same food day after day, which made most people lose their appetite. As a result, many were starving. The quality and quantity of medicines was also questionable. They were constantly in short supply, to the point that the same syringes were used. It was no secret that patients who came in with one illness soon developed other illnesses. In the end, before a person died, there was little effort to cure him. Many questions remained open about the money coming into the funds. After all, only 7% of the total amount of receipts was used for its intended purpose. It is unknown where the rest of the money went. But what was most striking was the attitude of Mother Teresa herself. First, she categorically forbade the use of antibiotics and painkillers. When patients asked her why this was so, she explained from a religious point of view. According to the devil's servant, a person must suffer because most things in the world come directly from suffering. Because of this attitude towards her patients, one of the checks confirmed the unambiguous fact more than 60% of sick people died because of pain shock. Secondly, the decisions made from Mother Teresa were based solely on her worldview and attitude towards everything that was going on. Even when the woman herself was gravely ill, she packed her bags and travelled abroad for treatment to California. The call to a modest and ascetic life was contrary to herself. Mother Teresa always followed fashion and trends, ate expensive food, and in case of moving from one point of the globe to another, resorted to the help of private planes. Thirdly, many people are still amazed by the attitude of this personality to family life. Teresa banned abortion, but when her best friend Indira Gandhi spoke out about mass sterilization of the poor, Teresa supported the initiative. The same situation applies to divorce and the use of contraception. The woman who called for divorce to be banned in terms of the law endorsed Princess Diana's divorce from Prince Charles. And when Teresa was told that contraception protects against sexually transmitted diseases, the woman approved of such a decision. Conclusion Thus, Mother Teresa, who lived 87 years, is one of the most controversial and ambiguous personalities in world history. Enlisted to the countenance of saints in 2016 already after her death, she further strengthened her importance. But we should not forget what views the woman held and how she actually treated her patients decades ago.